can, Hello. You can just, you, yes, you can just wave uh, and uh, so that I know all of us are good. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this has been one of uh, uh, the requests that was done by a lot of ICRDs, both from East Africa and also from Southern Africa, that we should be having a lot of uh, these talks. We also suggested a couple of uh, topics and uh, some of the topics that uh, you selected, we shared them with the ICLD. And one of the topics that kept coming uh, over and over was the issue of uh, sustainable development goals and uh, the voluntary local reviews. And many of you uh, had admitted that uh, they had never probably heard of voluntary local reviews. Uh, while many suggested that they knew about SDGs, they also acknowledged that uh, they have not done much in their own localities or they do not uh, link very well within the, their planning and also uh, with the SDGs uh, that we have. So from that, we decided and it was agreed that we could start our first series of alumni talks with the issue of uh, SDGs and also uh, the uh, voluntary local reviews. And we are lucky that uh, we are going to hear that more from uh, Anna Maria Vargas, who has uh, a lot of knowledge in the area of SDGs and uh, voluntary local reviews. There are a couple of tools that you hear about that has been developed by ICRD and other partners. So uh, as we progress, feel, please feel free to put all your questions in the chat so that uh, Anna Maria can see some of the concern and maybe she can address them as she goes. Uh, there are some questions that we may be able to answer today, but others perhaps need uh, a bit more time. So please bear with us. For those we may not be able to put today, please uh, let us do that uh, later in the, after, the, after the talks. Uh, today's topic uh, is about, uh, we are all countries from Southern Africa and Eastern Africa. And uh, there's a few colleagues from Rwanda, uh, the Secretary General from La Liga, which is Rwanda Association of Local Governments Authority. And also uh, two colleagues, uh, directors from the Ministry of Local Governments uh, from Rwanda. They said they'd like to hear more. So we have uh, allowed them to, to come and be with us. Rwanda is one of the new uh, kids in the block in the ICLD uh, key countries. So sooner or later, you'll probably be seeing a lot of Rwanda and colleagues joining us in the media, in RTP or MPP or any other career, I mean, other activities. Today's topic is about mainstreaming uh, sustainable development goals in local authorities uh, in Africa. And also we hear, as I mentioned, about the introduction to ICLD's work with VLRs. And these are some of the emerging issues even in Africa. Everywhere I go, we meet those meetings of UN or with the Ministry of State Department, we are hearing these emerging words coming and coming. And you can remember, we only have less than eight years uh, to 2030. So a lot need to be done between now and 2030. And local authorities and county government are key, are key vehicles to, to ensuring that we achieve the SDGs before 2030. Uh, next, uh, next, Miriam. <clears throat> Uh, today's program is a uh, pretty brief, as you can see. Uh, I'll give you uh, just about three or four slides from here. Uh, and then uh, we'll hear local case studies from Kiambu in East Africa. Kiambu has done something uh, with SDGs in their county uh, integrated development plans. You hear a little from Martin. Martin is the coordinator for the Kenya Urban Support Program, which is they're doing a lot of municipality and administration in Kiambu. We also have uh, uh, from Mufulila, uh, Municipal Council, representing the Southern Africa. They have also some cases they share with us. We had asked in the forums whether <clears throat> you, you, you have anything that you could want to share, and these two came out pretty well. And then we'll have our main speaker, who is uh, Anna Maria Vargas, who is going to share with us all the areas that you have seen there, the work of VLS with the ICRD, the opportunities that we have, and how uh, you can be able to uh, in integrate uh, SDGs and also how to do a VLS within your local authorities. And also we hear how I said they can support the process. After that, we'll have a series of question and answers moderated by Kaboy Musonda. Kaboy is our IL alumni coordinator from the Southern Africa based in Zambia, Dola. And uh, finally, uh, we'll have uh, just uh, a precision that you, you're given uh, yourself time. Like Kenyans, they're actually on holiday. Uh, so I'm sure uh, we, we've cut off some of the celebrations, uh, but we are glad that you're here. Uh, next, uh, Miriam. Uh, as you know, and I'm, I'm sure you, you, this one, you have seen it either through uh, the ICRD forums. Uh, one of the aims of the alumni talks is to create a constructive dialogue and also to share experiences as we are going to do today. 
And secondly, although there are four, I just picked three. One is that knowledge sharing. One of the key areas that ICLD has been talking about for the last many, many years is that they, they, they encourage knowledge sharing between ourselves from south to north or south south. I know in East Africa, we share a lot between Jinja and Kenya, Kenya, Tanzania, and we also want to continue doing that between our colleagues within South Africa. And we want to learn a lot because I'm sure with every uh, municipality or every local authority, there is something that we have done that we can borrow. We can replicate from each other. The second one is continuous structured uh, learning like the one we're having today. And uh, I've heard from many of you that we should have more of this next year. I'm sure uh, Miriam is present and she will probably work something next year. There's a lot of the uh, topics you selected. So we are going to encourage, this is just one of the many that we have planned or lined up for next year. It's also exchange of practical experiences, uh, as I mentioned, learning from each other and sharing whatever you've done. Like what my colleagues from Rwanda, I mean from Kiambu and Mofurila will share with us. I'm sure we learned something which we can be able to do. Uh, the next slide, uh, Miriam. <clears throat> uh, since we started, uh, since we started alumni uh, about a year ago, almost a year going, we have had some milestones, and maybe some of you may have forgotten. But uh, I know we started with a meeting in Zimbabwe uh, for the alumni. They had met there, supported by the Swedish embassy uh, from Zimbabwe. And then later on, we had a partnership between ICLD alumni with Swedish Institute, and we supported a number of. Uh, uh, alumni from Kenya, uh, East Africa, and also from the Southern Africa. They trained the John Copping University. They also went all the way to uh, Sweden. And uh, that is one of the milestones that uh, we said we are going to give uh, uh, alumni a lot of opportunities so that they can learn more and uh, they improve on their skills. After that, there was local democracy academy, which is uh, one of the key areas of uh, ICLD. I don't know how many of you uh, were able to get there, but I remember we shared this information with you on the uh, WhatsApp groups and other emails. There is an uh, ongoing training like now bet uh, between uh, Kenyan colleagues and Ugandans. Uh, I can't remember the other, but I think it was Kenya, Uganda, uh, about the human rights and gender equality. They had a meeting here in Kenya uh, about a week or two ago. And this is also a partnership between ICLD alumni and uh, Lund University. I hope that's the way you could pronounce it, Lund University. And also uh, RWI is a big name, like one name, some, the Sanding Institute. And this is ongoing because I hear they are going to continue doing digital learning and they do their final training uh, either in Kampala, Uganda or Sierra Leone because there's some Sierra Leoneans in the team. There's also another one ongoing, which is being led by Anna Maria called the CBP Community-Based Participatory Research on climate action, uh, it's ongoing. People have, a lot of my colleagues in Kenya and other places are, are taking this course and there'll be the final workshop in uh, Dar es Salaam in November. This is ongoing. And this is one of, these are some of the initiatives that happened when we started this uh, alumni. Uh, we are also celebrating another milestone that we are going to learn or to launch the ICLD alumni talks with localizing the global goals, uh, which is one of the key areas. And you can see this is quite a number of activities that has achieved, uh, we have achieved as a team since uh, we started alumni about uh, a year ago. And I'm sure uh, this being the first year, next year there could be much more, much, much more that we can be able to do and achieve as a team. And I'm sure there probably be uh, uh, more areas of disseminating our case studies, our best case studies, I know there was a, a concern that uh, some of the colleagues don't know how to document uh, case studies. Uh, and I'm sure that that can be done later on as we progress. But these are milestones I wanted to share with you. In total, perhaps we are probably talking about almost 40 uh, alumni who have benefited directly in these trainings. And I know next year we'll be celebrating many more. Next slide, uh, Martin, uh, Miriam, sorry. Yes, uh, that's uh, the basic of uh, introduction. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that uh, although we are starting the alumni talk today, we have had a series of other milestones that we have achieved as a team from ICRD. And I want to thank ICRD because uh, this, all these initiatives came because uh, we, you know, we started talking about these the things that we can do. Uh, without saying going, that was my time. Uh, we were going to talk to the, we hear from the next speaker. Uh, that is Martin Kangiri. Martin is an alumni uh, of uh, ICLD. He was actually in my team. I was the mentor for their program, Leadership in Local Governance. Martin has been a beneficiary of the Swedish Institute and uh, ICLD alumni Jokopin uh, training on the social, I think social and accountability. He's also in the community-based uh, uh, participatory research training. I think he's been very lucky to getting a lot of trainings. 
And uh, I also work with Martin in many other areas here in Kiabu. I live in Kiabu County, not far from Nairobi. So Martin and I meet a lot uh, within our social circles and also within professional circles. And uh, now Martin, this is your time. You have below 10 minutes. Please share your thoughts and also your experiences and best practices from Kiambu and Kiwaja uh, Nyako. Thank you so much, uh, John. I think uh, that's quite a CV. Uh, yeah. And as John said, that uh, I've, I've been lucky uh, to be a beneficiary of more, of many programs through ICLD, but I also think probably, John, I'm talented. Uh, that's why probably CLD finds me as a resource. <laughs> so thank you so much uh, for that introduction. Um, I'll go straight to introducing more of myself. Uh, Miriam, so as uh, John uh, said, I'm an industrious, aggressive, analytical, pragmatic, happy, and working individual who loves meeting new people. Uh, I'm sure I've met so many of uh, the alumni here. Uh, I can count so many that uh, we've met uh, in different engagements uh, under ICLD. Uh, so uh, I'm an economist uh, currently pursuing a PhD in urban economics from uh, the University of South Africa with, other, with 13 years of experience, uh, six of them as banker, two as a policy analyst, five in my current undertaking uh, as an officer of the government, uh, but mostly running uh, donor-funded projects. As John highlighted, I'm a, an alumni of ICLD having participated uh, under ITP2, which ran uh, from uh, year 2019 to 2020. After that, uh, we engaged in several other initiatives uh, last year, uh, towards the end of this year, actually mid this year, around June, we were in job copying uh, university, uh, pursuing a diploma in accountability for sustainability. Uh, pursuing a diploma in human rights uh, and gender equality in climate and disaster displacement. We are also participating on community-based participatory research uh, training under uh, Victoria University. So we are quite in different uh, initiatives under uh, the alumni program. Uh, next, uh, Miriam. Uh, okay, next slide. Great. Uh, so I was invited to talk about my county, which is Kiambu, and I'll give a brief description of Kiambu. Uh, it's located in the highlands of Kenya, uh, in the former central province, close to Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Uh, so uh, my county is only 14 uh, kilometers. I think you move to the next slide. Uh, sorry, back, back to slide number two. Back, back, go back. Uh, uh -huh, go back. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, the other one? Great. No. Oh. Slide number three. The other one? Uh, which one do you want? <laughs> one. After introduction. Uh, yeah. No. No, which one is it? Or maybe you can share from my. Yep. Great, now go to the other. Oh, my goodness. Which, uh, what do you want to be talking about? Number three, slide number three, from the first, second, third. One, two, three. Yes, that one. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, so as I would say, it's one of the LDS counties uh, in my country. Uh, with a GDP uh, of uh, 1. 1. 1.090, uh, that's equivalent to 152 million USD. Uh, it covers an area of 2.5 square kilometers and has a population of 2.7 million people. Uh, as you can see from the map uh, on your left, I don't know whether from your computers is on your right, that's my county. Uh, you can see it borders Nairobi. I know some or most of you have been to Nairobi. So we are just next uh, to Nairobi. So we call ourselves the bedroom of Nairobi because most of the people who work uh, in Nairobi reside in our county. So we deal with a uh, night time population of the city dwellers. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So we, we are talking of a peri-urban uh, county, right? So we're just next to the city. Uh -huh. So that is one of uh, our municipalities uh, in uh, Nairobi. I mean, in Kiambu, which is just next to Nairobi, it's called Dika, uh, which we are about to make it into a city. 
right? Uh, I think uh, in Kenya, we have three cities. So Vika will be the fourth city. I would say that uh, we are fast urbanizing uh, owing to our proximity to the city with at least 70% of the people uh, in my county living in urban areas. Kiambu is the most uh, urbanized county after Nairobi and Mombasa at an average rate of 4% as compared to 3.4% national urban growth rate. And we have six municipalities, that's Dika, the one that you can see on your screens. Then we have Kikuyu, we have Ruiru, we have Kiambu, we have Karuri and Lemuru. Uh, but uh, we are about to formulate another set of five municipalities uh, that have complied with uh, uh, our Urban Areas and Cities Act, the act that uh, guides us on setting up uh, new urban areas and cities within the country. You can go to the next slide. Uh, so the, the work that we've been doing on compliance to sustainable development goals in Kiambu County, so far from uh, the SCRD training that we did uh, in 2019, 2020, we have had several initiatives. Uh, we have been able to train the members of the county assemblies uh, on compliance with the standard development goals, to the sustainable development goals. We have trained the CECMs. Eh? The CECMs are county executive committee members who are equivalent uh, to cabinet secretaries or the ministers. Uh, so they are the ones who sit uh, with the governor in the executive body that uh, administers uh, all the, and governs within the, 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 the county. We have trained the municipal managers. The municipal managers are equivalent of mayors uh, in other countries. We have trained directors, uh, administrators, and ward representatives. We've also trained contractors and uh, other developers uh, in the county, both the public and private uh, developers. Uh, on ensuring that their developments comply with the uh, sustainable development goals. We've also been uh, doing more initiatives to train the residents uh, in our county so that we are, because we are serving the people, we don't want them to be left behind uh, because ultimately they are the consumers of uh, all these uh, programs that we are doing uh, in the county. You can see me uh, there training. Um, I think that was a training on the directors. Uh, then uh, with my friend uh, who is also an alumni called Fidi, I think he's from Botswana. We were discussing on uh, how we are going to uh, custom make SDGs so that now they are they are well understood by our people, right? So those are the engagements that we've do, been doing uh, as a county. You can go to the next slide, uh, Miriam. Uh, so the initiatives that we've done uh, in 2021 and this year. Uh, we drafted the annual development plans, uh, capturing uh, SDGs, especially SDG 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, much of the work, because as I said, 70% of our people live in our urban areas. So at least uh, SDG 12 is very important to us because we want to make our cities very sustainable uh, for this growing population. So we've been really uh, insisting on that in our program. We've amended our procurement plans uh, in compliance with the SDGs, trying to make sure that all the programs that uh, we engaged in as a government, uh, the ones that we are procuring, even the, 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 the contractors that we are getting, understand uh, what is expected of them uh, on the areas of SDGs. We've also been allocating and appropriating the budget in compliance with the SDGs uh, and ensuring that every department that is presenting a budget, uh, we are checking on its compliance uh, to the 17 SDGs, or at least several. You know, a budget doesn't really have to comply with everything, but at least uh, in that area, in the area of uh, scope as a department, at least they are complying with SDGs uh, in that line. Uh, we've also been uh, ensuring that uh, the different uh, departments uh, in doing their, their strategic plans, they have captured a whole uh, chapter uh, on SDGs as a part of the international, uh, the global uh, goals that uh, uh, they will have to inculcate uh, in their strategic plans. As you can see on your right uh, is a copy of uh, the CADP, that's the County Integrated Development Plan. Uh, we have listed several programs and uh, checked whether they uh, comply with the SDGs before we, we do a program-based budget uh, on the set of programs. Uh, next slide. Uh, yes, uh, so these are the implement, this is the implementation of the programs that uh, we've been doing as a county. Uh, you can see uh, these are uh, our towns. Now we have uh, started changing uh, the investment uh, component in our budget from 
in this, the initial way of doing things. So we were doing so many roads. Now we started uh, cutting down on expenditure on motorized infrastructure to do more sustainable program and that are all inclusive. Uh, one of them being non-motorized transport where we initially was allocating almost 98% of our budget to roads. Uh, then we realized that uh, only 5% of our population own cars. So ideally that's a discrimination by itself by allocating much of our budget to people, to the, you know, the, the, the smaller group in our population. So we started cutting down on the budget for motor vehicles and started uh, doing more non-motorized uh, transport network. So as you can see, that is one of our towns called Kikuyu. Uh, we have expanded our corridors to do more uh, NMT than, uh, than roads. You can see people uh, resting uh, 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 at the side of, uh, of an NMT uh, in Kikuyu. All right, uh, this obviously uh, makes our city more livable and sustainable. Uh, and as I've said, it also reduces inequalities by encouraging walking than driving. All right, uh, then uh, we have uh, done solar street lighting. We are move, changing now from conventional lighting into more solar. Uh, our solar provides affordable and clean energy for our county as compared to the conventional lighting. Uh, we also discussed, uh, but obviously that solar lighting contributes uh, more to uh, security, hence contributing to extended business hours by our people. As a county, we are able to collect more, meaning that uh, we have been able to promote uh, growth in the businesses of our people which of course uh, has contributed more to the economic well-being of our people, which uh, ultimately lowers poverty, which is one of the, uh, of the SDGs. All right, uh, you can go to the other slide. Uh, we've also been encouraging more citizen engagement than before. Uh, by, and I mean, uh, bringing citizens on board, uh, one will be in check from our people uh, and they'll make us accountable. Because even as we, we, we uh, bring SDGs into our plans, our people really have to adopt them. So we've been also uh, training our people so that they can uh, be the ones uh, who are keeping us in check on whether we are able to deliver on our promises uh, to them, uh, which again also contribute to SDG 16 uh, on, uh, on strong institutions and partnership for goals, uh, which ultimately uh, leads to uh, uh, reduced poverty. Um, uh, next slides. Uh, so uh, I wish to thank the SELD, obviously, for uh, training programs uh, such as the ones that we've been participating in, uh, and also much of municipal partnerships. Uh, most of our <coughs> partners are engaged in partnerships. Uh, the again, in such forums where we encourage, uh, you know, uh, peer sharing, even with the alumni. Uh, and even with universities such as Land and John Coping, where I've said uh, we've been participating, and even for such meetings, uh, and uh, we would ask to we would like to ask the the SELD to be making uh, such meetings uh, even after uh, you know people participate in programs. This uh, alumni program uh, they try to make it more vibrant, uh, so that we can be meeting and exchanging ideas uh, from uh, different uh, uh, countries. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Martin. Uh, you managed to keep time. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm sure they, they'll be put on the chat and perhaps you can be uh, seeing them and you may uh, plan how to respond much later. Allow me now to introduce uh, Castro Shisanga. Castro Mubanga Shisanga from Mufurila Municipal Council in uh, Zambia. Mufurila is on the side where this is called the Copper Belt area. And I think they usually say that most of the presidents, former president of Zambia, come from that area. <clears throat> from that area, Castro is also an alumni, and uh, we met also in uh, the ITP program. He's also a beneficiary, a lucky beneficiary like Martin, and uh, he attended the Swedish Institute, uh, Jokopin and uh, ICLD alumni um, training. And uh, Castro, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, welcome and. Uh, continue. Uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, Castro Sanga is my name um, from Mufrida and uh, I'm Director of Public Health here in Mufrida. Of course, I attended uh, uh, the ITP in uh, Municipal Financing, uh, supporting local economic development and democracy uh, between 2014 and 2018. And I also attended uh, the Accountability for Sustainability course 
in your shaping uh, together with Marty. So thank you so much. You can go to the next slide, Miriam. Yeah, basically, I'm from Mufria Municipal Council, and uh, Mufria is one of the districts uh, on the Copper Belt province here in Zambia. And it, share, it shares, basically shares uh, boundaries with uh, five districts and uh, also with uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Yeah, next slide. Yes, in terms of uh, <coughs> spatial analysis, uh, the district has, uh, as you can see, the road networks, they are connecting uh, to the other districts and to uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, next slide. Yeah, the district population is uh, 162,889, of which 49% uh, are male and uh, 51 are female. So uh, that is uh, basically the gender distribution for that population. And we have a population growth of 1.3% uh, and uh, a population density of 99.5% uh, per square kilometer. And, cover, and the district covers a, an area of uh, 1,637 square kilometers. Next slide. Yes, um, in terms of uh, uh, the health facilities, uh, those are, you know, the, the health, uh, we have a total of uh, 40, 43 health facilities. And uh, in that area, the district is still growing. We are still, you know, coming up with, uh, uh, more hospitals and health posts and health facilities in the district. Next slide. In terms of uh, the education sector, uh, the district has uh, about uh, uh, 10 uh, secondary schools and uh, seven combined schools. And uh, most of these are within the, the urban setup of the district and a few within the peri-urban uh, district. So that is just a depiction of uh, uh, the education facilities that we have here in Mufrid. Next slide. Yes, uh, the district uh, poverty analysis, as you can see from the map there, uh, the district has high poverty levels in the peri urban uh, areas. Of, uh, and um, um, as you can see, the distribution there in red. So those are basically the points where there's high, you know, poverty levels, and it's mostly the areas in the very urban uh, areas of the district. Next slide. Uh, in terms of land use pattern, uh, Mufrida is uh, basically a mine predominant. It's a mine. It's a mine. It's a mining uh, district uh, where copper ore is being mined, and uh, part of the land use is. Uh, uh, covered with a forest. We have basically about five forest uh, national forest reserves. And uh, the area in brown there is uh, the built up area that we have in the district. And uh, the other areas we have for agric agriculture. And uh, of course, the other land is unsurveyed. And just, that's just just a land pattern use, but uh, the district is predomin predominantly a mining district with uh, a few, you know, agriculture activities taking place. Next slide. So basically the, uh, the map there shows uh, the natural resources that we have in the, in the district uh, of Mufrida. Uh, it is basically endowed uh, with uh, you know, abundant natural resources. We have about five uh, national forest reserves. We have uh, perennial streams and uh, we have one of the second biggest uh, rivers in Zambia that uh, passes through the district. And uh, the map just shows the the perennial streams, the rivers, the dams, and also the national forest, which acts as uh, you know recharge areas when it comes to environmental conservation. Next slide. Yes, uh, the vision for the municipality here is to provide uh, effective and sustainable municipal services in a transparent and accountable manner in order to improve the quality of life in the district by 2030. So basically this taps into the national you know, vision for the country, which is Zambia Vision 2030. And that uh, coincides well with uh, the Sustainable Development Goal because uh, they also have that agenda uh, 2030. Uh, basically the, the, the SDGs uh, want to be a shared blueprint for peace, 
and prosperity for the people, the planet now, and also into the future. So basically the vision for the district is uh, speaking to the national you know, vision 2030 and also the vision for the sustainable development for agenda 2030. Next slide. Yeah, so how is um, Freya Municipal Council mainstreaming the SDGs in the local local plans? So uh, as a district here in Mufrida, uh, we have been doing, uh, you know, uh, integrated development plan. So basically the planning involves all the government aligned departments, uh, the quasi government and also the civil society and government organization. We come together by the local authority and uh, we do the planning together so that we can uh, unnest all the areas that speak to the uh, SDGs. So basically this integrated development plan has helped us address uh, most uh, you know, issues that are contained in the SDGs and uh, it, has, it is working well so far. And uh, uh, that is uh, how we are incorporating the SDGs in our planning. That is just one, one aspect. So the other aspect is uh, the localization of the eighth, what we are calling, we have a national document that we are calling the eighth national development plan. Uh, so uh, basically we are localizing it to suit our, our district and uh, in, in, a, in, in as much as we are doing the localization, we are you know, paying particular attention to the, five, the four pillars of uh, the national strategic plan which speaks to economic transformation and job creation. That's one pillar and the other pillar talks about, uh, speaks to human and social development. So even as we're doing the plans, we have different uh, government departments within the district. We come together and we have segmented. So there are those that are looking at uh, economic transformation and job creation. And uh, another group is looking at human and social development. And the other group is looking at uh, environmental uh, sustainability. And the other group is looking at the fourth pillar, which is a good governance and uh, and environment, good governance and environment. So basically we come together and uh, we break into groups and uh, we have planned and uh, the plans that we have done, we have, we have just finalized the local, the local plans for the eighth national development plan and these will speak to also the national plan. So uh, they also have an aspect of, uh, you know, monitoring and evaluation framework will be able again to be meet, to be meeting Basically, as uh, all these uh, you know, more sectoral group from different government departments, we're meeting at the local authority in the council chambers, and uh, basically do the monitoring and evaluation of whatever plans that we put forth that are speaking to these uh, pillars and ultimately speaking to the sustainable development goals. So the other way we are doing the planning is uh, through the Constituency Development Fund. We have this fund that is given to the area members of Parliament here in Freer and in Zambia, basically. So, uh, it was recently, you know, increased by the, uh, the new government, and uh, it's quite a substantial amount. So this amount is, you know, uh, really helping uh, in community projects and also looking at uh, youth women and uh, community empowerment and also the aspect of school bursaries and, skill, and skills development when it comes to, you know, streaming into the SDGs. So the other way we have, we have what we call the district development coordinating committee. Basically, this is a committee that comprises uh, uh, several people, the business community, the government uh, line ministries, uh, the, the, the church mother bodies. So we come together and plan as a district and uh, you know, prioritize whatever uh, uh, programs and activities. And uh, after you know, prioritizing them, and uh, we recommend to the CDF committees for funding. So basically, when uh, prioritizing this, we look at uh, if they are speaking to these uh, sustainable development goals, and uh, we are all, always conscious of that. So this is how we are localizing the local plans to speak to the SDGs. Then uh, also we have uh, uh, the operational based budgeting. So using our annual budgeting, uh, you know, system for the council, for the municipal, for the local authority, uh, we are using operational based. So in this bud budgeting system, uh, each department, you know, sees, analyzes, and comes up with tasks, operations, and not indicators, but investments. So to it comes up task, operations, and investments. So these are basically you have to speak to the sustainable development goals before they are funded. And uh, ultimately, we have the risk management policy. Uh, the policy we just uh, sat with Minister of, uh, Local, uh, Minister of Finance and National Planning 
and we came up with a policy for the for the local authority for the municipality and uh, we have de since developed uh, risk registers uh, risk identification risk category we have identified risk categories and assessments and the likelihood and the impact we've also put in place the control assessments and the treatment options so basically these will also help us address uh, issues uh, to do with the sustainable development goals because we have uh, risk management champions in each of the departments of the local authority so whenever you know a plan is done a risk, uh, risk management champion will be able to see to to, to it that he, uh, that issue is being you know is, is addressing some of the issues like for example gender issues uh, in, in relation to the sustainable development because uh, next slide so uh, how are we working with sdgs in the local agenda so when we look at uh, sdg number one no poverty and sdg number two zero anger so we have here in Mufrila uh, different, uh, you know, uh, government uh, programs that addresses uh, SDG number one and two. So we have a social cash transfer program where uh, we look at those that are vulnerable in the community, those that have no source of income. So through this program, we try to, you know, help out and uh, they are on monthly. Uh, cash transfer that comes from, from, from the central government, of course, coordinated at a local level here. So when it comes to identif identif identifying these uh, vulnerable members of the community, the local authority is always key. And uh, we go to the grassroots through the established uh, structures like the world development uh, committees of the council. Of course, with also with involvement of the civic leaders and those uh, that, uh, world development committees that are non-political. So in addressing issues of uh, good health and well-being, uh, we have district health uh, programs that are you know, uh, going on in the district. Uh, we have uh, those that address child health, others address uh, maternal health, uh, of what course, and needs? others address uh, issues to do with uh, uh, top uh, 10 causes of uh, mortality in the district, like malaria. So we have IRS, that's indoor residual house spray uh, programs that we conduct in the district. We also uh, address issues to do with uh, mental health because that's uh, something that uh, is emerging as one of the public health concerns. So uh, we we'll look at SDG number four that talks to talks of uh, quality education. Uh, the government just introduced uh, um, free education and uh, this has uh, tremendous affected the teacher ratio, you know, uh, teacher ratio when it comes to providing quality education. So as a district, we are trying to address this and uh, we are working together with the district uh, education board uh, secretary or office as a local authority and uh, using different offices. We have lobbied for more teachers so that we can address the people teacher ratio so that we can have quality education and also uh, construction of more uh, schools using the community uh, development fund, the CDF, and also improving the, uh, the, the conditions uh, for the learning conditions, the schools, and providing all those necessary equipments. And uh, also, we using the CDF social development fund, we have a component there uh, where we have twenty percent of it that goes towards uh, bursaries to 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 to, to, to school going to the children also. Uh, the other component was for skills development. So in the picture there, you can see it is the mayor and the area member of parliament uh, giving out uh, you know, empowerment uh, to the vulnerable women uh, within the district. So uh, on the area of uh, SDG number six, which speaks to clean water and sanitation, we have various uh, programs running in the district. We have uh, also drilling of uh, you know bowls in the period band, as you saw in the uh, uh, provide analysis uh, graph where well, that's why we have well, most of the issues there when it comes to uh, water and sanitation. It's not really built up as you saw also from the other maps that I had presented earlier. So we have a uh, drilling of goals that is happening and also through public health department, we have our provision of all those sanitation services. And uh, as a district, we have embarked also in a refurbishment of uh, the water and sanitation infrastructure in the district through the company that council has, uh, uh, has engaged or the company that, that, that is in charge of the water and the sanitation system here. 
uh, in the district. So that is happening, of course, it's happening with a, a sponsorship and uh, it speaks also to the aspect of partnership because uh, it is being funded by the World Bank. So uh, when you look at SDG number seven, affordable and uh, clean energy, as a local authority, we are working with uh, IDC. This is Industrial Development Corporation. Uh, we have uh, since uh, allocated land and that land will be used to setting up a solar plant. It is uh, a 65 megawatts uh, solar plant. So currently it is uh, going undergoing the environmental impact assessment stage. Uh, next slide. So the other SDG we are addressing as uh, Mufrida is uh, SDG 13, climate action. So in addressing the climate action, uh, we are combating issues of deforestation. So we, we are encouraging the use of charcoal briquettes. Basically these are made from organic waste. Unlike uh, the indiscriminate cutting of, of trees and uh, you know uh, making charcoal, the other charcoal there that, that we have. So we're trying to encourage the use of uh, you know, charcoal briquettes using uh, 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 these organic waste that is almost everywhere. Because if you look at the composition of waste in the district, uh, we have uh, the highest about 60% of the waste is uh, organic waste. So we're trying to you know uh, take advantage and uh, have a paradigm shift when you look at waste, uh, to look at it as a resource and to use it in uh, uh, making these charcoal briquettes. So in the picture there above is one of the youths that we have in, in the district is, uh, is making the charcoal briquettes and uh, that's the picture there. So we're trying to you know commercialize this so that we can address the issues of uh, deforestation and in this case, cutting down of trees. Um, also, we want to form, we, are, we, are, we, have, we have formed uh, uh, environmental clubs in uh, secondary and uh, primary schools. So basically we want to inculcate a mindset change to the learners uh, in schools so that uh, we can have a well-informed you know, uh, citizenry as, we, as time goes by. So we, we, you know, also waste management is a great, great contributor to, to climate change. So we, uh, we have planned and uh, we, are, we have budgeted for the creation of uh, a Santa landfill. And uh, this we are trying to achieve it through uh, a public-private uh, partnership. So we have engaged uh, a few uh, companies and a few individuals that uh, have expressed uh, uh, interest to come and work with us so that we can have a center and few so that uh, you know we can address issues of waste management and uh, the dump site the picture there shows uh, one of our dump, dump sites here in Mufrida and also the district has uh, embarked on the procurement of waste management equipment and also the promotion the center and few promote uh, you know waste uh, reducing of waste reusing of waste and basically the recycling of of waste so yeah, uh, the other uh, program that we have is a tree planting exercise. This is an ongoing program that we have in the district and uh, we are trying to revegetate all the open spaces, play parks, avenues, streets, and uh, various areas in the district. And uh, of course, in the picture there, that's me planting a tree and I was in that uh, yellow vest is uh, our, our, our mayor. So this is an ongoing program where we plant uh, trees. Uh, using, uh, you know, uh, school going pupils and also the civil society organizations that come on board. So basically in addressing climate change, we also review environmental impact assessment documents for all proposed uh, projects that are being undertaken in the district so that we can recommend for appropriate uh, measures. Next slide. So the other uh, SDG is uh, 17, uh, a partnership to achieve goals. So. With uh, SDG number 17, uh, we have active you know, global partnerships with uh, the World Bank. And of course, we can't uh, you know, forget ICLD, of course. Uh, yeah, we have uh, you know, all these capacity building uh, trainings that we have undergone from ICLDs that have been beneficial. And uh, you know, we have uh, all these change champions that uh, and change agents within the, local, the, the, the municipalities. And here in Mufria is no exception. I am one of the change agents in management. And of course, I have other colleagues that are change agents when it comes to you know, advocating for these uh, sustainable development goals. So in, when it comes to local partnerships, we have partnered with civil society organization, the district, and uh, 
with much focus on human and, uh, and social development and the other area of environmental sustainability. And one such uh, uh, civil society organization is Future Preneur. And uh, using and working with this uh, uh, civil society organization, we've uh, done quite uh, a lot of uh, uh, projects that addressing uh, climate action, addressing also issues of human and social development. So we also have national partnerships with the government. Uh, we are working with the Ministry of Mines because, like I mentioned, Mufria is a predominantly mining township. So we have a project running here called uh, ZEMRIP, that's Zambia Mining Enviro and Environmental Remediation Improvement Project. Uh, this project basically seeks to address uh, the environmental uh, degradation that has happened in the mining township owing to the mining activities that would have been going on for several years here in, uh, in Mufria. So that project uh, is something that we've partnered with the mines and uh, we are conducting uh, the environmental remediation and also trying to improve the other components speaks to the livelihood. We're trying to improve the livelihood status of the people that have suffered from these, uh, you know, environmental uh, remediation, environmental problems from the mines. So those are some of the partnerships that we are doing in the district. Uh, next slide. Oh, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Castro, uh, for that informative uh, presentation. Uh, as you mentioned, please, if you have any questions you'd like uh, to ask uh, Castro, you can leave them on the chat and we'll be able to share with them. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, allow me to introduce the next speaker, uh, key speaker today, Anna Maria Vargas. Anna is the research director at ICLD, and she's very passionate about research work, a lot, really passionate. And I'm sure uh, many of you have interacted with her in areas of research, or you have participated in some of the tools that she has uh, developed under the ICLD. And I would encourage you to, after the, the, the program today, to visit ICLD website and uh, particularly go to the Knowledge Center. There's a lot of materials there you can learn that you can also adopt and, and work with in your municipalities or county governments or your within the communities. There's a lot, a lot to learn. And uh, please feel free uh, to also uh, share your questions as uh, she's presenting so that towards the end of the, uh, uh, the, end of her presentation, uh, Kabwe will be moderating the question and answer sessions from uh, all the alumni participants. Anna Maria, if you're ready, please welcome. Thank you, John. <clears throat> ready? And I hope we have some minutes at the end to hear your voices and questions and ideas about how we can work together for this uh, project on voluntary local reviews as a tool for local democracy. So ICLD uh, financed uh, last year a project that was about um, studying the different voluntary local review process that uh, municipalities in Sweden, but also in our partner countries were doing. And out of that, we published this toolbox that is uh, here on the screen, and I just share the uh, link to the toolbox on the chat. Um, I don't know if all of you know about what voluntary local reviews are, but they are pretty much a way for local governments to report on the achievements of the sustainable development goals. Um, they are uh, something that was born out of the local government's own initiatives. So the more formal instrument is called national, national voluntary reviews. Uh, that are made by the countries and uh, they are presented in July in the United Nations uh, Forum in New York. But local governments say, well, why the nations if it's us that are, have to localize and actually uh, do the work with the communities to make sure that we achieve the sustainable development goals. So many local governments around the world, the ones that you see here on the screen, until 2021, about 121 uh, local governments uh, have done these voluntary local reviews. Uh, in Africa, you see some there, but there are others that were upcoming. So the list was not complete. Uh, but why voluntary local reviews and local democracy? As you know, ICLD is very interested in working uh, with local democracy. This is our core. Um, voluntary local reviews reporting on the SDGs uh, can be a very strong way to achieve participation, transparency, accountability, and equity, of course. Uh, think about that uh, sustainable development goals main principle is leave no one behind so of course if you work with the sustainable development goals you're working towards equity uh, but also it is uh, we want to emphasize that it's not just about sitting in your local government alone and making a report saying this is how much we have done uh, but instead making it in a transparent way with the citizens involving them and making a partnership because 
why the sustainable development goals are not only about the governments they refer even to you as an individual person think about the sustainable uh, development goal on sustainable cities or the sustainable de go uh, goal uh, five on gender equality if you treat bad you women and if there is gender-based violence at home we would not be achieving that goal so we need to partner even with the citizens to achieve the goals and to make these reports what ICLD is inviting is to use the communities as data sources uh, to work with the citizens and community representatives to discuss together the progress that they see also in the sustainable development goals, adapting terms and language to the local realities. Uh, what is um, equity in my own language? How do we see it in our community? And creating new complementary metrics so that it resonates with people with their territory, looking into the SDGs, which ones are the ones that the community prioritize. And there were some interesting examples from Rio de Janeiro and Los Angeles, where the voluntary local reviews were done actually by the communities, like with a strong leadership from the citizens together with the local government. Um, so here are some steps that, uh, well, the two previous presentations, Martin and Castro, show really well uh, progress on the sustainable development goals uh so your your local governments have done a lot already but we don't know the rest of you how far you have gone so one of the first things to look is to what extent your municipality is aligned is policy making and planning to the sdgs um, and identify the overlaps and the gaps and whether you're ready to start with this voluntary local review um, the second step is to uh, start thinking about should it cover all the SDGs or should we select some key SDGs in our voluntary local review uh, and making a group like who is going to work with that. Is this part of a municipal partnership that you have already? Is this part of a project that you are doing with the municipality? Uh, and involve the citizens already in deciding. And the city of Stockholm decided to do the voluntary local review, and they only chose one target per SDG. So to narrow it down and see what fits my municipality, what fits the local government that I'm working with, uh, sometimes it's very um, overwhelming. The SDGs with more than 170 uh, indicators. So why not choose the most important? Um, oh, sorry. And ICLD has some interesting tools, such as the video think that about is gender. here, and I will not share because of lack of time. But we have, uh, for instance, some uh, tools, materials linked to very specific SDGs, such as Sustainable Development Goal number five. Um, the step num number three, we will say, is to think about the local national linkage. Is your national government also submitting the voluntary national review the same year? And I want to say that Kenya and Uganda has already made two voluntary national reviews. So a good step is to go and have a look, read those national reviews and see what your national government has reported. Uh, and in 2023, next year, in July, you see the dates there, all local governments uh, or national governments meet at the United Nations uh, and they bring these uh, national voluntary national reviews and also they bring the voluntary local reviews so the countries that will be um, presenting this next year are Tanzania, Zambia, Bosnia and Rwanda from the ICLD group so it's a really good momentum because since your national government is collecting data reporting uh, there is a momentum at the national level so it's a perfect opportunity for you to tag along and also do your voluntary local review but it doesn't mean for instance Kenya and Uganda that you cannot do it you can do it at any time um, and then start collecting the data and how are you going to do it? Is it quantitative? Is it qualitative? Is it mixing? And we're having a course right now that is about community based participatory research. So we are going to try to implement for next year a call for using this community based participatory research to report on the sustainable development goals. Uh, peer learning, of course, is part of the ICLD core. Uh, if you want to join this initiative of the voluntary local reviews, then we think we can provide spaces. Is it through the municipal partnership or is it through the alumni or is it through other mechanisms to meet with other local governments that are also doing the voluntary local reviews, share experiences, 
and learn from each other. So this is the last slide, more or less. I want to talk about the ICLD support, what we are planning right now for next year. Uh, we're thinking about online training, mentorship of alumni or researcher to help the local government to collect the data. So we want to partner with the, you, alumni, and with researchers uh, to see if we can help selected local governments to collect data. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning, participatory methods, I want to ask you here, what else and who is interested, who thinks that your local government is committed, uh, wants to do it uh, with the community and in a democratic way. And I will share the slides after the presentation, but there are so many guidelines and uh, sources uh, for uh, you to uh, do these voluntary local reviews. So I stay here and I haven't looked at the chat, but I'll stop sharing. Uh, open the <laughs> conversation now and maybe listen to some of you uh, who is interested, who wants uh, to work on this. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, very. The, also, the experience of Zimbabwe about making it simple, linking it to the budget process. <coughs> Kalulushi is interested from Zambia, and your country is presenting next year. So, that's very interesting. Yeah, I see some. John, how should we moderate this? And how much time do we have? What do you okay, say? Uh, no. Kabwe, ma Madam Kabwe, moderate uh, the next session of question and answers. Please raise up your hand so that uh, Kabwe can be able to see you and uh, we can go in some order. Kabwe, please, if you are ready, continue. Okay, thank you very much. Um, maybe before we go into that, uh, those that are interested in what um, Anne Marie is just from presenting, you can still keep posting on the group so that she can see even as we're doing the question and answer session. Please. Um, so uh, when we were having our presentation, we had a couple of questions that were popped in. So if you have a question, please just raise your hand. I'll see it in the chat, but then I'll just start by bringing out the questions that were uh, asked in the chat. And one of the questions was to what extent are, are you engage, engaging gender responsive budgeting to localize the SDGs? So um, I think this one was a general question, not specifically to, to someone, but um, Anne-Marie, if you can answer that one, that would be nice. Um, but also if other people have uh, responses on what they feel uh, is happening in their local places, that would be, please, you can go ahead and respond. So. To what extent are you engage, engaging gender responsive budgeting to localize the SDGs? Yeah, I think I uh, that was to Castro the question, or it was more of it I was general. It's, it's more, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, Castro. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. When it comes to gender responsive uh, budgeting, like I mentioned, uh, we are we are using the operational-based uh, budgeting uh, system, unlike uh, the activity-based uh, budgeting uh, system here in Zambia. So we have uh, a few municipalities that are using that, but as we're using the operational-based, and uh, I also mentioned about uh, the risk management policy. So what, what is happening is uh, we have uh, risk management champions, and these are, are always late. We have trained them, and they're always late when it comes to issues to do with gender in whatever activity that the council is under, undergoing. So they're able to come in and uh, to ensure that, uh, uh, you know, the gender, the, whatever is being budgeted for, you know, is, is, is taking into consideration issues to do with uh, gender, gender. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Castro. Uh, does anyone have a different response or we can move to the next question? I, I have uh, some more questions. So I don't know how much time I have, but um, the next question is who are the members of the risk management teams? I think this one was for you, Castro. Which ones, who are the members of the risk management teams? Uh, is it only, does it only have the internal audit? Uh, not really. Um, uh, it's not just the internal audit, but uh, all departments of the council, we have, um, 
uh, appointed uh, risk management champions in each of the department. But uh, when it comes to composition of those, it's uh, audit and uh, all management, all directors of the, of the local authority are part of the risk management. And uh, these managers also trickle down to chief officers within uh, departments. But uh, there's only one champion in each department who's able to see to it that whatever this uh, you know, department is doing uh, is addressing uh, issues to do with uh, whatever he wants to, to, know, to address in that uh, program that is being undertaken. So basically, we have management uh, and not just uh, internal audit. We have uh, management is part of the committee and also uh, the risk champion. So if it is not observed by the risk champion, it will still be intercepted when it comes to management before it is implemented. So that is how we are uh, doing that. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, we have about five more minutes, um, but I'll run through the other questions as well so that we just quickly tackle them. Any statistics on mental health in the district? Castro, that was for you as well. Any statistics yes, uh, on mental health in the district? <laughs> Those from Zambia, I think you know, uh, especially you, Kawe, you know that uh, Mufrida has got a lot of mental health issues. They say that if you walk for 100 meters and you don't meet meet anyone with a mental you know, disorder, then you are next. <laughs> anyway, that was a, a, a joke. So basically, we for now, I don't have the statistics, but uh, the prevalence uh, for mental health disorders uh, in the country in Zambia it is approximately uh, 20 percent. So that is just the prevalence of uh, you know public, uh, mental health issues in Zambia it's, uh, at uh, 20 percent. So I don't have the statistics for the district with me here. Thanks. And um, how sustainable is your social cash transfer there in Muflera? Okay, I think. Uh, I mentioned uh, it is it is sustainable. Yeah, it is uh, sustainable. Uh, so far, from the time it was introduced, uh, we've never had uh, any, 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 any issues. Of course, we've had uh, issues to do with how it was being uh, you know implemented at national level, but uh, it has uh, the money has continued to trickle down to uh, the beneficiaries, and this time around, it's being done uh, differently. And uh, it's not being politicized, but uh, using structures that are non-political to ensure that uh, the money goes to the, uh, those vulnerable members of the community. So it had a few issues, but uh, it is uh, sustainable. Cowboy, cowboy, you are muted. You are muted. Oh boy, you are muted. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I, I was saying the last question is for Anne Marie. I think she, I've seen a response in the chat, but it was uh, how do we aggregate the data from local to national level? So maybe you can just quickly explain that before we can uh, wind up on the questions. Yes, I responded on the chat that it varies from uh, country to country. So some countries do it centralized. It's the national government that holds all the statistics. Some like rely on the local government's own data collection. So they will be requesting local governments to submit it to the national government. But when it comes to the participatory methods that we're trying to implement, I have seen in many of these uh, voluntary local reviews that you tell the stories. So you tell the stories of what is happening in the community, how actually these achievements of the sustainability development goals have changed people's lives and the same these good stories going to these national reports and also to the uh, UN so that's what we are trying to do thank you so much I think these are the questions that I picked um, I don't think we have a lot of time I, I wish we did we'll probably have more questions but I'm suggesting um, how a database that sets okay i think there's another question that has just come in the chat maybe you can have a look at that but i'm suggesting that we can because we have groups uh, where we can um exchange this information we can continue to ask questions uh, and then we can share them and then we can see how best those questions can be responded to because i believe after such a great presentation 
there are so many questions that have come up that would probably need to be um, responded to. I don't know whether that's okay, um, John. Uh, I guess so. I can see there are three hands that have been raised up here. I don't know whether to give them uh, one a quick, quick, quick questions, not uh, sentences or paragraphs. Uh, you sure. should give the three quickly. They, I can see Wawelo, Dennis, and Hebo. But please be quick uh, with your questions. Nicholas. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tim. How are you? Okay. Hi. Yeah, nice to see you guys. Uh, I'll be very quick. My question is, uh, after such a good training that we've been able to undertake as teams, the challenge has always been implementing what we learn. And uh, one of the challenges is because of the financing. Because uh, for, for us to implement, for example, even issues to do with the SGDs, we need to be financed for us to be able to undertake even the, the studies. My, my question was, would it be possible for I, I, ICLD to follow up with us and see what you are doing at the, 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 the local authorities? And more so, would it be possible either to get a, a partner for us to finance the, the activities that we want to undertake uh, with, with regard to the implementation of the of, 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 of SGDs? Or would, be, would ICLD be in a position to finance us? Yeah, that's, that's my question. Good question. What's your name? My name is Nicholas from Nicholas. Kenya. Okay, yes. Nicholas. Uh, really good question. And this is something we've been also discussing internally, how to support economically. So we cannot support the entire voluntary local review project. That is huge. And that has to come from the local government. But what we're trying to, um, how do you say, support economically is to have a kind of stipendium or um, yeah, some support for alumni and for researchers that uh, could help the local government to collect data for the voluntary local reviews. So since you have the capacity and you have the knowledge and you have the experience and the contacts, so it will have to, we need the interest of the local government <laughs> because without that it's impossible. And then we could support some form of data collection. Okay. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay. All right, Dennis, Dennis, and uh, we only have Dennis and Ruth, and that will be it for today. Dennis? Yeah, thanks. Thanks uh, for the presentations. Quite, uh, you know, uh, very deep and uh, understanding. I just wanted to mention that uh, also from a civil society perspective in Kenya, we have been doing voluntary uh, reporting, and we have been partnering with the Ministry of uh, Treasury. And uh, the, the, the shadow reports that we have been producing, we have been engaging with the communities at the local level uh, up to the national level. So collecting <coughs> information from the village level and engaging the communities. And uh, the reports that we have produced, uh, some of them, sometimes they have uh, been in line with the, with the ministry, but sometimes they have also been uh, not in tandem. But uh, we appreciate the, you know, the, the, the need to express um, uh, our different reporting uh, mechanism and uh, also working with the government to ensure that uh, also the views of the marginalized are captured in those uh, voluntary reporting. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable uh, Zobula, you'll be the last uh, in the questions. Hey, Bell, uh, you, you can do the light, uh, but Honorable Zobula, please share your quick question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a privilege that uh, we have had this meeting and I want to echo everyone for being in attendance. My question goes to Kangiri. Uh, that's Martin. Uh, I, want to, I want to applaud him for the kind of presentation that is put forth. But uh, I have as, as one particular question to, that I need him to address. Uh, we have seen the challenges of upcoming and fast growing urban centers. And I want to know how uh, well they have set the, the uh, attributes in order to manage the wastes. You know, waste, waste management uh, is, is a serious challenge for the upcoming uh, towns and uh, serious municipality. And I want, I've I heard him. He, very soon it will be an, a, 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 a city, of course. So how, are, how is the involvement of uh, the clean energy when it comes to issues of planning with the waste 
management. And the last, uh, lastly, I want to I want to hear how they engage uh, the citizen in terms of uh, issues dealing with the waste management, how the citizenship is engaged and how they intend to build such institution. And the final one to our LCLD partners, we want to thank you because you, you've made us know a number of things as uh, we envisioned this vision 2030. My other question is, uh, we had talked of, uh, of some certificates being given to us as trainees of the ICLD. Where has this one reached? Thank you, thank you, mentor. <laughs> okay, those were very, very many. I thought it was one, but uh, Martin can answer <laughs> very, very briefly, very quickly, I'm sure, because you are <laughs> locally, you can also talk to thank each you. other outside the meeting because of that. <laughs> very, very okay, quickly, Martin, you. big one. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, John, I think I got the questions right from uh, Honorable Ruth. I think uh, one of the initiatives that we are trying to adopt as, uh, as DICA as we transform to um, uh, city setters is one that we are encouraging uh, segregation and waste sorting at source. Uh, we are uh, uh, teaching our citizens, <coughs> especially residents of DICA municipality, to minimize uh, the amount of waste that uh, uh, ends up at uh, the dumping site. Uh, dumping site is called Kangoki. Because uh, as I keep saying, uh, the opportunity cost of land in my county is very high. Uh, so the government doesn't have even land to buy, leave alone the cost uh, to invest in a bigger dumping site to accommodate the waste as the population grows. Uh, so we are ensuring that uh, we minimize the quantities of waste that ends up at uh, the dumping site by encouraging uh, sorting at source. Uh, the moment uh, our citizens through continuous uh, 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 training uh, learn that aspect, we will have minimized the waste that uh, ends up at the dumping site. Uh, and obviously that will help us boost uh, agriculture because we will be sure. sorting organic and inorganic and organic will be selling to the, uh, to the farmers who uh, ultimately will boost food security in our, uh, in our, in our city. Uh, and obviously we will be able now to have uh, sustainable waste management uh, like uh, it happens in Europe and elsewhere where there's a minimal uh, land for expansion of dumping site uh, and such like facilities. Uh, so we are uh, training our children uh, in schools, in primary schools and in high school, because ultimately we have a culture change of people who know how to manage waste through the modern uh, ways of waste management as compared to the conventional ways of just collecting and taking to the dump site. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Ruth. I think we will, we will be able to respond to you later on uh, the other issues of the circuit. I'll, I'll call you and I update you on the, some of those. Uh, the colleagues we have here from ICLD might probably not know much about it. Oh, this is the Nori Center and that is ITP, but I'll call you later and uh, update you. Allow me to thank all the presenters today, uh, Martin and uh, Castro and also Anna Maria. I have a feeling, Anna Maria, we might uh, recall you again to give us a little more mm -hmm. because uh, you have opened our minds as much more. And mm -hmm. uh, I will encourage people to go and read uh, the ICLD website on the Nuri Center. There are so many tools. And then we'll be able to engage together between alumni and also your department, the Knowledge Center. Allow me also okay. to thank my, my Miriam. Miriam has been the one we've been coordinating uh, this work with. She's also been the one who has been helping us in those uh, partnerships and follow up. Thank you so much, Miriam. And I want to thank all the other people who are here. You took your time. Kenyans are on holiday, but I can see you're quite a number in the, in, the, in, the, in the forum. I thank you so much. And this is one of the series of uh, the alumni talks that we'll be having. And I'm sure as we move along, we'll be able to guide and give more to those uh, topics that you selected. This was one that has, and I feel like probably we did not exhaust it as much. Uh, so we might uh, again redo it maybe later in the next few months but you'll be able to give your guidance on that. Other than, other than that, because I don't want to keep you so much, you've had about an hour and 15 minutes. Thank you for your time and consideration and I wish you a good evening, wherever thank you, you are. Very, thank you very much. We 